Hey guys, welcome to the Game of Money. I'm here with Chris Salerno, Show, yes. and QC Capital. Which of these letters did I get wrong? Nope, you got them all right. Okay. <laughs> What's QC? QC is an alternative investment company. Uh, right now, we help accredited investors invest into the car wash sector, which is a booming sector, and we're very excited about it. Why uh, QC, a car wash? Yeah, uh, so we yes. really saw a, a market transition in 2022. Uh, why, literally, why the letters QC? Uh, yes. Charlotte is known for the Queen City. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, so we, we took it right after that, QC. That's where our headquarters is at. This is what I want people to know. Most important thing you're going to hear today in the capital markets. Yes. This is how you name your firm because the risks are so high oh, yeah. in capital formation. And you can see a very inexperienced uh, team mm -hmm. when they are making logos. Here I got $20 million in this company. I just showed you we just made a logo. Yeah. Making logos and spending time choosing a name. Most definitely. In the capital markets, you the rule of thumb is you look out the window, you see the name of the street you're on, and that's Coldwater Canyon, capital. Yep. Mulholland Drive, capital. I love it. Beverly Glen, capital. Oh, and yeah. it's a three-second decision, so I love that. I know. Yeah, we get quality control sometimes, yeah. but no, it's the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I think you're spot on. It, it definitely is a psychological play. Something that we've done above and beyond is even with our website design, we didn't just design it. We designed it over a psychological perspective of even color, shapes, because everything is a psychological design when it comes to the marketing. Nice. And why do you think in terms of psychology? My mom was a clinical, is a clinical psychologist. My dad was a sociologist, yeah. demographer. And so I tend to think in these psychological frameworks because that's the way I grew up and I saw, oh, yeah. I grew up in an academic environment. What brought you to psychological frameworks? I'm, I'm so fascinated with how the mind works and how we operate, why we make the decisions. And even with your phenomenal books, Pitch Anything and Flip the Script, it's a whole psychological game. When you are pitching your investment opportunity to an investor, you want to know what their needs are, what their wants are, and then how to pitch whatever you're pitching to them to fit their book. And so I've always been intrigued with how the mind operates and what we do with the mind. And, and yeah, I spent some time at Wharton Business School for marketing as well, which that's all we talked about mainly is colors, shapes, and how those colors and shapes impact the mind in a positive, in a negative manner. And that's how we form everything and all of our pitches to our investors is from a psychological perspective. And so we'll get to that. The, one of the things I try and do here is in pitch anything and flip the, in this, flip the script, I try to do as much of the sort of psychological frameworks. Yeah, I love and it. And so if you're, a lot of the podcasts out there are about ideas. You go to even Joe Rogan. Correct. It's yeah. mainly ideas. Very few people who are out doing things. It's mm. in some ways doing things is boring yeah. in the culture, in the society, in the way the boring we work. businesses make the money. Boring businesses make the money. We fetishize ideas. Yes. Somebody who has an idea of how to do things better, how to get to Mars, how to get beyond Mars, how to fix the next pandemic. Those, we still those, haven't been there yet, too, to Mars. Right. We got to take action to get there. Got to get action to take <laughs> there. Probably I'm not, I don't know if I'm going. Probably won't let my son go. But I won't there's go. so many of these shows bring ideas Correct. to the table because it's easy to imagine and envision a tower, a sp space elevator, space tourism, AI, flying cars, little robots that go in your body and take away diseases. It's, it's ideas. We're Correct. all full of ideas because it ties into hope. It ties into the indomitable spirit yeah. of the it's human psychological condition. Psychological play. Psychological play, but the actual doing of things oh, is yeah. hard. Theory is simple, so. application is difficult. Yeah. So I like to bring up people who are actually doing something. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, and so you're in the capital markets today. You're raising money. You'll this year you'll do from talking to you. It sounds like something between twenty to thirty million dollars of capital yes, allocation right. this year. Yeah. And so what are you finding is dislocating the capital? So you're a young guy. You haven't raised five different funds. You yeah. weren't at McKinsey for five years. Weren't it? So I, I interviewed um, Scaramucci. Anthony yeah. Scaramucci. Right. I've heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. And so he graduated from Harvard. He was at Goldman Sachs. He went on to run a you know multi billion dollar fund. And you're working your way towards there. Yeah. So the only way for somebody with your background, as good as it is, to move into a very active, competitive capital Correct. and operating market is from a dislocation. Yeah. So where did you see the dislocation? Yeah, I really see the dislocation, and I think we touched on it as well, is really marketing to accredited investors who have the ability to get into companies prior to just 
going public or in the market. As we discussed, in my opinion, once you hit the IPO, that's great. All the people pre-IPO made the money, but after IPO, it goes down very quickly yeah. and stabilizes. So we found a, a very lucrative and, and huge benefit of marketing throughout social media, and that's with podcasts like yourself that you have throughout Facebook, Instagram, of advertisement, getting in front of these accredited investors or independent wealth advisors as well, and, and help educating them on the car wash sector that we're currently in and help educate them on the alternative space. Because that's where, uh, in my opinion, you do see higher yields and also those very large tax benefits given the, the current market environment. And I think also too, the election. We're in a crazy year right now with the election. And I remember raising capital with the previous election too. And it was still very difficult. And you have the accredited investors really thinking what's going to happen. And you have to talk them through that. You have to talk them through no matter what party gets in, you still have to keep investing. You can't pause everything. Uh, yes, their policies will change things slightly depending on who gets in. But it's really thinking overall, is this a good investment? Does this investment make sense given the current market environment and and the market environment that we anticipate coming here in the near future. So, so if we go, if we get in the paint a little bit, so I, I talk to accredited investors every day, yeah, yeah. something between 50000 to a quarter million dollars. Mm -hmm. If I, I get home and my son goes, how much money did you raise today? I love and, that. And if I say anything below 600000 he's, he's like, come on, dad. Pull was called today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that, that That is our biggest coach and our biggest, our, our, our biggest motivation. Now, my son, who's four and a half years old, I let him come to meetings with me. I let him sit in the office with me to hear the conversations, to understand, because I know that's what I did when I was younger. And sometimes when you look at them and they say that, it's okay. Yeah, we got to get back at it and get, get to it. So I got to get back at it, but I talked, I talked to people and what I find with with accredited investors is what I can do and be interested to hear your experience because you're yeah. doing the same thing directly. Mm -hmm. I put the best thing that I have in front of them in the most simplest, you saw the presentation, Correct. in the most, in, in a narrative structure that is very thorough for a non-professional investor. Correct. And then I don't really try and answer the questions. I'm like, yeah. hey man, you're either in with me or you're out. Or you're out. Yes. We'll, we, we'll get you inside the data room. We'll ask your questions. How does this work? Are there tax, like your basic questions. But if you want to perform diligence. Correct. On like a car wash mm -hmm. or our technology, it's much more complicated. Oh, yeah. What, what, what you're doing is you're performing diligence as a non-professional. Yes. So when you go to fly on a United Flight 2380, from Los Angeles to Charlotte, mm -hmm. you're not down there going, "Hey, I need to get on the, I need to get on the tarmac." I hadn't thought in these terms before. <laughs> like, I, I want to check tire pressure on the yeah. wheel. Let me but this make, is, I'm going to check the Enverons. Yeah. I'm going to go in there and make sure. Seven seven seven. This is heavy one. I runway three left. <laughs> looking for 5,500 gallons of fuel and uh, clearance from Tower Nine. Yeah, you know, we, we don't need your help doing that. No, you get well. on, and your expectations is that you're going to get to your destination safely. Now you can choose. American. Correct. You can you choose Southwest. You can choose Spirit. Yes. You can choose to get an Ember Air Legacy 600 and buy a $30 million jet and have your own pilot. Oh, you have yeah. all these choices. But we try and make the best mm -hmm. airline. Uh, if you want to come with us, then you have to buy them. But once you buy the ticket, and then we will take you yep. to your destination. Love that. As promised. I love that. But I don't want. So I was on a call recently. This is a good example. We made the presentation to a bunch of investors. Mm -hmm. It had a couple screens on the Zoom. Yeah. So we go from the presentation over to a Zoom so I can see the people. Oh, yeah. And then I hear some voice. I can't see the face. So we'll see all these people have their cameras turned off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, man, if you came to a call to listen to a presentation, yep. talk to the management team, talk to the people who have $20 million invested, right? And you don't feel like you're far enough along in this relationship to turn on your camera just you belong somewhere else yeah uh, let me introduce you to chris salerno let me see if he'll put up with that no that don't send them to me please <laughs> we don't have time to put up with that you're touching a very uh, hot subject and i think you're spot on as well uh we generate anywhere from three to six hundred uh, accredited investor leads per month so our system with our marketing is generating a lot. And so kudos to our marketing team uh, and our marketing company that helps us do that. But you are spot on. It's We are not a Grant Cardone, a Jordan Belford type of sales approach. It's either you like our product or you don't. And we understand that and that's okay because there's a ton of other products that may suit your investment needs, but this is what we offer. And yes, we do deep dive into the market, our competitors, what they're offering, just like America, just like Spirit Word. They understand what their competitors offer, and that's how they tailor their prices. Yeah. And so that we do that exact same things, and I love that analogy because you're spot on. It's very true.
And we, for the same reason, like we don't have a sales department. Yeah. You just, we have a compliance, you fill out the paperwork. If you love it, if you don't love it, totally understand. Correct. Go for, but so I'll hear, be on the Zoom call and I'll hear, what's your technology moat? And I'm like, who's a venture capitalist? Hey man, I said no venture capitalists on these calls. Like it's not for professional investors. I'm not a professional investor. I just want to know what your technology moat is. And so um, just my answer is, okay, th th this is a very specific question. Do you, are you asking like, what is the depth of our intellectual property licensing and how are we developing intellectual property as we continue into this market? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> and if you are, like, have you been in manufacturing yeah. in machine What's your tools before? With it? So oh, yeah. you can, but if I have to teach you manufacturing, if I have to teach oh you mechanical God. engineering, if I have to teach you electrical engineering, You'd if I have to teach you civil to engineering, <laughs> and I have to give you a degree in finance in order for you to process. Yeah. What is your uh, intellectual property? Mm -hmm. I can't do. I don't have time. No, and and like we talked, we discussed earlier is, is timing. The psychological side is everyone has shorter uh, attention spans. Yeah. If you look at YouTube videos, used to be 30, 40 minutes, and then now they're twenty minutes, and now they're fifteen, and soon, in my opinion, they're going to be ten to twelve minutes. Your average length because of our attention span. One thing I do with our whole team, and I tell everyone because my son, his name's Cruz, four and a half years old, I say, when you go ahead and get everything you have ready to me or to any of our investing partners, present it like you're going to present it to my son. It has to be easy to understand and it, and it can't be complicated because once it starts to be complicated, you lost them. And uh, I, yes, I agree, but they try and introduce complexity. So they'll all hear, what ERP system are you gonna use? I'm like, hey man, if you think <laughs> we can bring this technology from Italy, oh, raise ERP $20 million, States. do all this complex stuff, but we're gonna fail on choosing an ERP system, then we are just- Yeah, uh, we're not you, a good fit right we're now. We're not a good- And the, yeah. great, the best thing I do is, hey, Orrin, we may not be a good fit right now, but I'm gonna keep you on our email list so you can see our progress. And whenever you're ready, we'll be here. And, and then they see the progress. And it's, a, it's another marketing play is that you create that FOMO after they see a couple funds close, after your investors are getting paid distributions, they're like, okay, we want in, here we go. And it's a lot easier from what I found when we uh, do that. I agree. We, in fact, one thing that I do is if somebody comes really hard in the paint with questions, yeah. right? What's your check size here yeah, with all these aggressive questions, yeah. right? <laughs> are you, you know, 50? Are you a million? Right. Or, so I could do up to a million, yeah. right? Is it, so I go, listen. Here, let's let's just role play. Say, yeah, hey, uh, hey, Chris, what's your check size? Uh, my check size, one hundred and fifty thousand, seven hundred and fifty thousand. Let's say a million. Million bucks. Okay, yeah. so you can go up to a million bucks, but you have all these questions, right? Yeah, I have a lot. Yeah, why don't we just size down? Okay. To where you're comfortable, all right? right? Where you're like, hey, you you have these questions because a million dollars, you feel like you're at risk. Correct. For a yeah, million. that's a lot of money for me. Okay, where? So you want to know what ERP system we're going to use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at what? investment range does your concern about erp system go away probably maybe low 700s okay great so once you size down even below that once you size down to something like 400 because okay. what we find is people come in we've had people in the series a1 mm -hmm. and then we ask them to fly out here and meet us we go to italy and then they come in the series a2 yeah. higher price but we've reduced risk we've had people all the way through the series a3w okay and so pick a starting point where you're like i'm in with these guys i love them I feel like at a million dollars, I'm concerned about the ERP. Yeah. At seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, I'm concerned about who the CFO is going to be. Yet unselected, but at four hundred thousand dollars, it's sufficiently de risk for me. I'm all in. Yeah, I think that's about forty percent of what I was initially going to. So I could be all in at four hundred. Excellent. Yeah. So so I think rather than convincing somebody, it's a good way that you I, flip the script. I just try and bring I them like down because I know once people see us and compare the way we run investor relations, the way we run the deal, oh, yeah. the way we communicate, the openness, the transparency. They're like, I'm not getting this somewhere else. And then they just, they look out and go, this is remains the safest place for me to get the high, the return I'm yeah, looking for. That, you're, that they're comfortable with. And yeah. so then what's your version of this? So what, what I try and do is put the best deal forward that I Most have. Most definitely. And then if somebody wants more, I don't have it. Yeah, We're not negotiating because I don't have anything to negotiate with. Yeah. I the what I found from working with Italy is this. When you go into other countries, yes. they negotiate very aggressively because they don't have the US market. Yeah. And price is everything. But In the United definitely. States, price is not important to us. Yeah. It's speed and it's quality. certainty of relationship, mm -hmm. quality. Yeah. Yeah. And so we don't we don't negotiate on price. So I just I don't need the best. So I put my best price out. 
there, even when we're hiring, yeah. even when I'm buying a car. I'm like, that's when you buy a car. They all, we don't negotiate on prices. Okay, the uh, longer I stay here, the longer we're going to get a price reduction on this yeah. car. Uh, I, so you know, I think you're definitely spot on with that. And I think that's a big thing too. Is is once you devalue your investment by giving more that's out of the box, I've noticed that a lot of times the investors won't even invest at, in certain circumstances. So I do the exact same thing with our investments. Is hey, this is what it is. We design this to be this way. If you don't like it, hey, we'll keep you on our email list so you see our future opportunities. Yeah, I the way I think about it is I don't even have a fund for these kinds of opportunities because the deal I'm in, I cannot create a fund out of those deals. You're a little bit different. Yeah. This It's the best deal. If I put in a fund, then all the other deals in the fund would be much more risky oh, yeah. and lower quality than this one deal. So that, that's why I have a single deal. Oh, I love that. Yeah, no, and I, I think the single deal mechanism is, is phenomenal. It just depends on what industry you're in. Yeah. You know, we're, uh, we're in two different type of industries. And I, I think what you guys are doing, you showed me before this talk about everything you're doing. I think it, it's highly niched and it's a, hu a huge demand too, especially with what type of product you guys are releasing. Yeah, thank you for saying that. So car washes, I'm very interested. I, I yeah. was in mechanical engineering. As you can see, I love cars. Oh yeah, I uh, do too. <laughs> we, we, so we have a, I'm working with a car company. Uh, they're, they make... They work with Lotus mm -hmm. to make replicas, so a, a modernized Lotus from the 1960s. Yeah. So it has. I will tell you, I yeah. love that Amira. Yeah, the Lotus oh, Amira is like yeah, a Lamborghini, Amira. and a, a McLaren had a baby. So they, like, I love that. Car. They make like a post market Amira with different wheels, different running gear. Yeah, the company's called Radford, but they send the cars to England mm. from California to be painted, and and then brought back here oh, because wow. we can't paint with oil-based paint, you have to paste water-based paint. Water-based here in the yeah. United States. And what has happened with cars and car washes that with paint and- Oh, what, it's what, what, wild. What, is there technology in a car wash or is it just shoot oh some God. water through there? No, and, you want to talk about technology. Yeah. AI is hitting the car wash industry. Like really? No, I mean, it is unbelievable how AI is impacting in a positive way technology. Every, right when you pull up to one of our car washes, your car, your whole car is analyzed, paint color, everything before you start to process inside. So we analyze all that and we work very closely with our chemical provider because we're actually in talks uh, with some of my Italy friends about bringing car washes to the uh, Italian market. And it's a whole different world over there when it comes to the quality of the wash, also the environmental too. We yeah. use reclaim systems to yeah. recirculate around 85, 90% of our water. And it's a whole different world when you talk to European. And that's a big thing too, is about health as well. And we'll touch on that later. But yeah, we work very closely with our chemical manufacturer because all different type of paints, if you look at Tesla, for example, Tesla recommends that you do not do any touch or touch type of car yeah. with, with brushes. They want you to do touch lips. Yeah, because their paint quality, uh, in my opinion, is a lot less. And so I think you're seeing that a lot of these manufacturers are finding ways. Hey, how can we actually do the thinnest type of paint coat? Correct. It still looks good. It saves us money. But that will only uh, have a certain type of lifespan. So with our chemical manufacturers, we have to work very closely with them with AI technology to make sure we can give that best quality wash in less than three minutes to our customers. And so is yours touchless? No. So ours yeah. is not touchless. It's soft touch. So we use like microfiber brushes that are soft touch because at the end of the day, you're still going to have to have some connection yeah. to really get the dirt, the grime off. Just like if you're waxing your car, yeah. unless it's matte like that one. If you're going to wax your car, you're going to have have some touching on the paint to make sure it pops. So I'm about to go to an area where I always get comments like, this guy sounds like a dick, but it's... <laughs> <Do> it. um, <laughs> can't really... They, you know, I get, it's so sad to be living your life like this, and who thinks like that, and yeah. why do people... But I probably have $12,000 of car cleaning stuff. Yeah. So the even the compressor, so when you think about the... I find it very zen to clean the car, and yep. then whenever I do something, I take it to the... the Matt, you, if you look around here, the maximum extreme oh, most of that thing can be done. I love it. There, you can go buy a power washer at Home Depot. Correct. And that power washer, the higher volume of water that goes through it, mm -hmm. the higher pressure it will have with it. Correct. So there's a power washer, the German power washer called, I don't know why I'm losing my mind, but it's, uh, I don't remember the name of, but anyway, it's like the specialized power washer that the, that has the, the best fit, fitments, the highest grade hoses, oh, yeah. the top uh, of the gear nine. oil, top yeah. of the notch. But so an American guy who runs a thing called Obsessed Garage. Okay, yeah. So he went to them and said, hey, look, we sell your power washers. We sold like a thousand of them last year. But as you make them bigger, the pressure increases. Mm. In America, for 
car washing what we, we want. Do. We want more volume, less pressure. Yeah. So they made this a specialized one, like the 13T special. So oh, I yeah. bought that one. You know, it was a couple thousand dollar power washer, and then you need the nozzles yep. and the, All the attachments and the water filter, most stuff like fun. that. And so what I learned through this process is the paints are getting, they actually now, my understanding is at the port, they have to go through the cars because they lose paint and chips. And oh, prom- wow. Yeah, and they refinish them. They, before they, they hit the market. Before they hit the market. Wow. So there's a whole refinishing. They look for chips and and All stuff that. that's missing because the paint quality is, is so far down. Yeah. No, I think you, you have to definitely be very, very careful with it. Every time new manufacturers come out with a different type of technology, different type of paint, things like that, you have to be very careful. I know a lot of people like to wrap their cars. If you, back in the day when you first got the first wrap, it would peel off. Now it is so, you don't even know a car has been wrapped. Yeah. It's so good. So right. as I, technology advances, you definitely, and, and that's our COO and myself work very closely with our manufacturers to see what's going on in the horizon. We have quarterly, if not monthly meetings with these manufacturers to say, okay, that's awesome. NDA, yeah. what are you working on in the near future that we need to make sure that we're, awesome. we're tweaking things so we can give the best customer service and best car wash to our, our clients and customers. So I want, I want to keep going down this. Uh, so what we do is we foam the car. Oh, love that. So, so we wet it and just yep, knock and off all the things. Yep, yep. And then we foam it, and the foam and just drags all the all dirt, the dirt. Yeah. off, right? And then we bucket wash it. Mm-hmm. So that's the equivalent of your microfiber. Oh, yeah. Right? And then we spray it. I mean, this is horrible. It takes an hour. It uh, so for you guys who are listening, right, uh, what will happen is you'll turn your car over to you. If you have a, a detailer. Yeah. Detailer, you come out. And you walk your car, you look at it, you're going to pay him, deciding how much to, to bonus him. For here, Southern California is $120 to get a car detailed. Oh, that's cheap. Oh, Sh- really? Charlotte's yeah. 300 oh, to wow. get a car detailed. Maybe detail is too strong a word. Yeah, but that's like a like full washed, in. Like washed, washed. Yeah. yeah, just an exterior. Exterior, interior, clean. See, yeah. It's about 100 Yeah, that's good. Ours run like two, 300 yeah. over in Charlotte. The yeah. biggest thing I think, and I love Southern California here, is beautiful area, and thanks for having us in your studio. Biggest thing I found over in the East Coast is that it is very hot and humid. So you can't have it sit on the car that long, or now you have spots, you got to hurry up and get it off. Uh, yeah, interesting. So the guy will come... And then if you walk out, here's one thing I would tell you never to say to your car wash guy is you missed a spot. And I'll tell you oh, why. I know. <laughs> uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, I took all my equipment out. Uh, we have a, I washed my wife's car. I don't know really what it is, but a pretty high spec car. Yeah. So it took me about an hour. Oh, my son and I, we washed it. It takes longer when he's helping. Mm-hmm. So it takes about 45 minutes to wash her car. Oh, yeah. And when I'm doing it, it takes about an hour and 20 minutes <laughs> when he's helping. You, you uh, use that as your meditation too. Yeah. So we wash it, clean it put it back in the garage and she comes home and she's like, oh, you cleaned my car. You missed a spot. And my, I went from Zen happy to like, oh, I'm, oh I was so mad. Do you oh, know yeah. what we just did? So yeah. I learned never tell your detailer you missed a spot. Yeah. You don't want just, to. Yeah. Definitely not. All right. So we foam it. The foam drags the dirt off. Then we wash it. Then we microfiber it. Then we water wash it again. And now it's pretty clean. And then we get after it with a spray wax. Yep. Or if it's, we have, we have four cars nice. and two motorcycles that are matte. So you can't put wax so yeah, on the mat. Careful. It's just clean. Mm. And then we hit any less. But that that can take us a good over an hour for one car. Yeah. The sports cars are easier. And with the, those, the SUVs level, are and those with level cars too, you're not going to want. Now, some people do. Now, with the new technology that's coming out, you can just do belts. So just like you have a belt in your manufacturing facility, yeah. imagine that just on the floor. Your car goes up. You don't have any clearance. So a lot of people will take those type of cars in there, like in South Florida. Yeah, things that's like what that. we have around here, the belts. Yeah, the belts, yeah. and which is nice. However, with those type of cars, you do want that type of detailing. Yeah. That's, those are very important type of cars. A paint chip or doing something like that is thousands of dollars yeah. with those type of vehicles. Uh, but then it comes down to timing. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Just like I said, our yeah. uh, intention span is getting lower. I think Amazon made a huge play into that with next day shipping. Oh, hey, you can actually get it in certain cities in a couple hours if you just order it. And I think that right there really enhanced all of our mind when it comes to, hey, I want it now. I want it great quality and I want it now. And you're going to see that again with YouTube dropping from 15 to 20 minute videos to 10 to 15 minute videos because of our attention span. And because we are so busy, if you know that you have a membership and you can hop in, get a three minute wash, go on about your day, that's not bad. Yeah. You're gonna do it, your car's gonna look good, you're gonna go on you're gonna go on about your day. 
And so I want to uh, I want to talk about the capital markets here for a second, yes. but just I'm I'm interested. If I have a Hyundai, I don't even know the names of Hyundai's. I don't. Either. This is where I get the comments. <laughs> um, I know. I know every car that BMW is going to come out for the next four yep. years in their M series, but I don't, can't name a single Hyundai. Hyundai Elantra, Cilantra, is that, Solana, I Solara. I don't know. Sonata. Some of these, I will tell you, some of these, I don't even know the name of it, but there's one that looks like a Defender. I have a Range Rover. Yeah. I have a yeah. Range Rover. It's Sport. a Bollinger. I love it. Yeah. But right. there's a Hyundai yeah. that looks like a Defender. Oh, a Hyundai. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's a Hyundai, but it looks just like a Defender. Yeah. And I had to take yeah. a second look at it when it passed. And I was like, wow, yeah, Brutal. I still wouldn't own one. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> no offense, but. All cars are good cars. I'm going, I'm rolling down the highway and something will come screaming by. Oh, yeah. Right? You know, I think I'm moving along at 86 miles an hour and whatever, RR, Triple R. Thing I have, I'm like, oh, this is fun. I'm, I'm cruising Let's down the go. freeway. I'm a master of the universe. And then some Nissan Versa will come by at 105 <laughs> miles an hour. All cars are good cars today. But my question is psychologically, why does somebody want, if it's not a, if it's not a super high spec, call it like Tesla X, if it's a, I don't even know how much cars cost, but if it's, are there cars that cost $30,000? I don't. Yeah, you can, can you get a car. One. Okay. I don't think a new one. So thirty thousand and forty thousand dollar car. Yeah. Why do people wash it? It's a utility. You want to know a, the number one reason why people get yeah, the car wash? Fascinated. Makes them feel good. How do you feel? You just said nice. it too. When your wife came out and said it, yeah. you missed the spot. How'd you feel? I was pissed. You were pissed. Yeah. But yeah. when right after you're finished and you and your son step yeah. back and you look at the masterpiece yeah. that you guys did, we were how in do heaven. You feel? We were in. On, it yeah, feels good. We were on. We were coasting. On clouds <laughs> of, of violin music and oh angels God, yeah. were feeding us grapes. That is the number one reason why people get their car washed. It makes them feel good. And because you're always in your car, it's also a reflection of you as well. If you yeah. pulled up in a dirty car, if you, I said, hey, Orn, when you come out to Charlotte, I'm going to give you some great Southern hospitality. We'll go get some barbecue. If you sat in my car and it was dirty, what are you going to think? You're going to say, huh, right. maybe he's not yeah. disciplined. Maybe yeah. he doesn't have all his, you know, can I say yeah. a cuss word? Yeah. <laughs> but maybe yeah. he doesn't have all his shit together. Yeah. And so that's another thing too. For my son and I, after we go to church, we go to the car wash and I make him vacuum his side out. And I, I teach him. It's a learning lesson for him. Hey, you nice. have to take care of your things. I promise you yeah. he does not make a mess anymore because he knows if he does, he has to vacuum his own side out and take care of it. But that's the number one reason. It makes you feel good. Yeah. Excellent. I love that. I think last thing, capital markets. Yes. What is happening with the cost of money? Yeah, I think right now it's feds are going to lower interest rates about a quarter of a point next month. The cost of money was very high. And a lot of people who couldn't weather the storm the past year and a half to two years really overbought or in a currently in a really bad situation. And that's for multifamily as well. I'm sure we've all seen the headlines, all commercial office space, but especially with the car washes, we've seen your larger Wall Street public companies and private equity companies uh, really overpay because of those interest rate hikes. A lot of individuals are getting floating rate debt or did get floating rate debt with no cap and was in a really bad position. So I think uh, my anticipation is feds are going to rate or lower rates about a quarter of a point next go round. I think in my opinion, the election does have some sway with them lowering those points because uh, another party wants to stay in office. And I think we're going to start to see it slow down. When, in my opinion, when the debts or the interest rates start to slow down, it's going to be cheaper to borrow money. I think you're going to see prices increase. I think you're going to see single family increase. You're going to see a lot more developers get back out in the market and start developing. And I think you're going to start seeing prices, everything else start rising. So when you think about a car wash acquisition, how do you think about debt to equity in terms of the maximizing the the ratio? So say during the free money bubble, you would say, hey, we think about 90, 95% debt, 5% oh equity, God. just proof equity. <laughs> I would never go that high. Right. I will say I've, I will never go over 80%. I, that's a, a, a rule of thumb internally. 80, and once you go over that, it's that's huge risk. We're sitting in the ballpark of anywhere with our sites, anywhere from 65 to 75% debt. The rest is equity that we raise from our investors and then also my personal equity that I put in alongside of our investors because I always invest alongside of our investors. So that's what we've really seen. Uh, we have some, I mean, I talked to a president of a bank uh, last week and there's a deal that's falling south. And basically he said, Chris, we'll give it to you. We'll give you the deal. Just put 10% in. Now, would I feel comfortable with that? Yes, because it appraised for four four million below, or we're under contract for four million below the appraisal. Yeah, and it's a quick turnaround that has a lot of metrics. But I think a big thing too is not only interest rate debt ratio. You you shouldn't be over leveraged or take a lot of leverage on, but you should also know the term. What's that exit strategy? Like our exit strategy is a refinance. Why is now the best time to place this type of debt on our car washes? Is because rates are, in my opinion, are going to go down in the next three to five years and then stabilize. We're going to 
be able to refinance with cheaper debt, take cash out money, our investors are going to get paid and then grow the portfolio. So are you thinking private debt or public debt on your oh, on your current acquisitions? Yeah, so we use community yeah. banks. So we use community banks. We found that has been very lucrative. Your larger banks really won't touch this type yeah. of asset class. We have great relationship with the community bank. And I, the reason why I like it is because I have the president of the bank's phone number. Right. So if I want to call them up, I can call them up and say, hey, we're doing, we're doing this. I need you to give us these terms. We have that relationship where... You're just another number to these larger type For of sure. organizations. Where uh, actually, I was at First Republic. First Republic got eaten oh, by yeah. Chase, and then now all of a sudden we have a retail. For a while, and we're running a hundred million dollar project. Oh yeah, through Chase Retail, which would be good maybe for running a yogurt shop, yeah. right? And so you very starkly see the difference between a large retail bank that has like a b online business portal that you would run a pizza shop with oh and my a God, yeah. real business bank like city national bank or first republic bank or yeah. and so and, and some do, of these community banks yeah have real business work. banks most definitely we do great work with m&t bank they're based out of maryland yeah they're, they're flying us up to watch a baltimore's game because they have the stadium wrapped in the m&t bank those are relationships yeah. that are great because we can call them up and i can call them up and say hey this is what we're looking after we need these type of terms can you guys make it work and what's the so then what is the cost of the notes that you're doing now on the deal yeah. Normally with these type of deals, they're six months, 12 months interest only. After that, you're going to have to pay principals. Yeah. Five-year term, we're seeing a 20, 25-year AM with that five-year term. We really, there's some deals we'll do 10-year term. The one deal, which is a very unique one, they're giving us a 15-year term and a 25-year AM. Yeah. So it just all depends. That's what we're seeing. We do see a step-down prepay. We try to get our step-down prepay really a three, two, one, and then in year four and five, there's no penalty. Yeah. So when we exit that we're not paying the bank yeah. extra capital or anything like that. And so what's the net? So once you get post your IO, your interest only, yeah. then what are you looking at in terms of your amortization rate on principal? Yeah, our amortization rate will be anywhere from 20 to 25% yeah. uh, with that principal and interest after that IO period. Yeah. And so the interest, and so if you think about it just as a, you know, as a interest rate against ROI. Yeah. So what is a net interest rate that you're targeting? Net interest rate, we're seeing it's really fluctuating. And I've realized too with these community banks because I they're depository banks. They want you yeah. to keep money with them because they can lend out more money. Um, we're, we're finding anywhere from 7 to 8%. Um, the one that's a diamond in a rough, he's given it to us at six and a quarter. Wow. I yeah. know. Uh, and he said, hey, we know you guys can operate. We, we've seen what you guys have done. We know your guys' experience. We just need you guys to take this property over because we don't want to file foreclosure on the previous owner because the previous owner, huge history with them. He just didn't even yeah. open it. Sorry, what's so, the number of that bank? Could you, uh, <laughs> I'll give it yeah, to you after okay. this. <laughs> I'll uh, give you the president's number. Excellent. And then do you, is everything blended in? Equipment, real estate, yes. operations? It's just a... Correct, yeah. Right. So we will not buy a car wash unless we own the real estate. We want to own the real estate as well because it gives us options. Just in case if we see something going on in the market, we can sell off the real estate, keep the bit opco company, or we can sell off the bit business, keep the real estate, triple net lease it. It gives you options. And one thing I have found out is that if you go into a deal without understanding your exit strategy, and if you don't have options, you're going to be limited and your hands can be tied behind yeah. your back and it's not going to be good. And then the last thing is before you focus on car washes, what else did you look at? So did you, were you just like, hey, you just snap right into it because it landed on your feet? No. Or did you go, hey, I'm going to get a divergent yeah. on some ideas before I get convergent on one thing? Yeah. So we own roughly around 375 million worth of multifamily still currently. Okay. Yeah. A uh, little over a thousand units. And we really looked very closely in the market. So in 2022, I sat down with our asset management team and I said, there's just no way the U.S. economy is going to be able to house with paint and car it three to five hundred dollar rent increases that's just that's not sustainable it's great that we're getting it yeah but it's not sustainable because i was looking into right. the near future so i said sell off what we can sell off given the debt environment and then let's go ahead and we're looking at a new different a new asset class self-storage in my opinion saturated i mean if you're sure. anywhere you'll see a self-storage everywhere uh, office i knew was going to take a big hit everyone's wants that work from home or hybrid approach industrial i liked industrial charlotte is booming with industrial it's right on the middle east coast so it's easy travel uh wasn't a large appetite retail triple net wasn't an appetite i'm not a fan i'm a fan of the cash flow of mobile home parks but i'm not a 
mobile home park type of guy. Yeah. All that I ruled out. And then funny enough, back before my college days, I worked at a car wash. And I recall how highly cash flow these businesses are. However, it didn't really register back then yeah. with the ownership of expanding. So can you just tell the truth? You were watching Breaking Bad? Yes, I was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's what really got us into the car wash sector was deep research. And then really all of 2023 flew out across the Midwest, East Coast, meeting with manufacturers, operators, owners, you name it, and really got a deep understanding of it. And then that's when we pivoted, launched the fund in January 1st of this year and growing substantially. We should in the year about 10 to 12 car washes. Amazing. Yeah. That will put us in the top 25 in the United States. Yeah. And then where do you go next once you're saturated with car washes? Like we said, probably a European market. European market's about 10 years behind us. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, our manufacturers already service the European market and the Asia market. Uh, I think that's going to be a hot topic with uh, our COO and myself is what does it look like to go over to the European market? Obviously, like you said, regulation with water, environmental, they are all uh, more concerned about that than here in the United Sip States. Sip power, clean water, small amounts of water, See, smaller cars. Correct. Let's see. They don't have as we have a thirteen trillion dollar cashed up consumer in the United States. Their yeah. consumer is not cashed up. They're more price conscious. Yeah. So you got to uh, be very and real estate careful. more expensive. Energy more expensive. Yeah. So, but otherwise, super simple. Yeah. Super simple. Yes. And, and so I, I see us growing the the car wash sector here in the southeast. Very large to over a billion with a nice exit. And then we have some other things going on with uh, telemedicine and and uh, some marketing companies too that are on the horizon. Awesome, Chris Salerno from QC Capital. Thank you for sharing that with you. Yeah. Game of money through Chris's eyes and lens as a real operator. So that that is much, I'd rather have Chris here than Slash from Guns N' Roses. Cause <laughs> Thank you. it'd be a lot more eyeballs, but Slash really doesn't know how to help you play the game of money. Yeah, thank you. you. Play the game of spending money. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Oren.